All right, guys. Welcome to the build video. This is a C6 out of a 71, 72 Ford. And we're going to be building this thing up. There are a few things I have already done. Um, that is bushing replacement. Um, the previous video showed you all the bushing locations and which bushings go where. And I went over quickly, you know, the depth and things to look out for. Another thing I've already pre-done is I've already changed out the seals and the low reverse piston, installed that, installed the spring cage with the loose springs, the updated rear race, and bolted that all together. Um, there are a few different ways of doing it depending on which setup or case you have. Sometimes you can just take the whole thing with the race set on top, tighten the race down, everything's good. Some This one in particular, we had to put the lower reverse piston in, put the race on, bolt that in, and then do the individual spring, spring cage, snap ring, and then press everything down for it to lock in. So depending on which one you have, that's what you're going to run into. Um, we've already put our metal clad ceiling rings on everything. So there's three large locking snap or, uh, metal clad rings on the stator. Or two large, sorry, locking metal clad rings on the stator, two small locking metal rings on the back of the forward input drum, and then three large non-locking metal rings on the governor housing on the output shaft. Another thing we'll go over is the updated low roller in the rear of the case. So it's a nice little upgrade. Um, gives you the new race, it's cut lower to give you a Torrington, bearing, a Torrington bearing, and that lets you replace this metal washer here that would normally go on the back of the rear ring gear, the output ring gear. On top of that, we got rid of the original one-way roller, and we've got the one-piece slow drag low roller, and this is out of just you can grab one from Bork Warner out of a E4OD. It's the same exact one. So we'll go over how to put that in. Um, you leave both snap rings out, and literally that one just drops in, turns, and locks in. So without further ado, let's get these drums put together, um, and then we'll keep pressing forward from there. All right, so our first drum we're going to do Make sure we get this in the camera so you can see at least some of it. You'll have a multitude of seals that come in your rebuild kit. Some will be square cut, some will be lip seals. Pay attention to what you're removing and that will let you know what you're putting in. This particular unit uses no lip seals on any of the pistons. So low and reverse piston, third and reverse piston, and your forward piston all take square cut seals. So. Make sure you clean everything up really, really well. When you're cleaning your pistons, make sure that that check ball is free. I don't know if you can hear that. Make sure you can hear it moving around. So, um, that actually goes in the drum. This one's going to go on your uh, apply piston. Make sure you are not rolling that seal. Same with the drum, it's going to go inside, if I can get it, I'm trying to do this while not blocking your view, but I don't think there's going to be a way of doing that. you're putting this seal on be careful as you do have to stretch it over the top of the drum and it does have those notches for the metal washer make sure you don't cut the seal and then after you get your seals in we're gonna take some assembly lube and Get that around your seal. 
a little bit more around the inside where that interior seal is going to ride. Always lube everything up. Um, any kind of appropriate assembly lube. Um, even petroleum jelly from the store. That'll work. Nothing water-based. If you're in a pinch, transmission fluid works, but you do have to be careful um, when you are doing seals with transmission fluid as lubrication. Obviously, it doesn't have the same viscosity as assembly lube does, so you do want to look out for that. Now that we're nice and lubed up, this just drops in. Good firm push, gets it down, and you get a rag. All right, hold on one sec. All right, I had to pause real quick, but we're back. So, you've got your piston in. Grab our handy dandy snap press, highly recommended. Um, this handheld snap press is nice. You can also have a foot press. Um, it works on just about every single transmission there is. So, um, that's kind of blocking our piece. Let's get that down for real quick. Now, on spring assembly, I start. So you'll see that there are wide portions. I start one on outside of each one of those, and then go from there. So there'll be six. Then I come across from the check ball and put one in over here. And then from there, skip off to the right-hand side. From right to left, you're going to skip one and put one in. Go over again to the right hand side, skip one, put one in. Over again to the right hand side, skip one, put one in. Should look like that after you're done. So I've always done it. It's never done me wrong. So, um, on your spring retention plate, you'll notice it's got the four tabs. That's actually holding your snap ring in and keeping it from popping out. Also notice you have four holes cut into your drum for your metal tab washer. So what I do is I take these four tabs, make sure they're not lined up with those four cuts, offset it just a touch. So what we'll do is offset to right there, move that aside, grab our snap press, There we go. Now, line the arms up to where it's not going to interfere with your snap ring. When you press down, make sure that the spring retainer does not go in the groove of the snap ring. And you'll see the tabs are just offset just a touch by the opening in the hub. And then the opening of the snap ring will go in between this notch and the cut open notch. Make sure that opening is nowhere near a notch or the retaining tab. <clears throat> also, there is a taper on these snap rings. So if you look at it from the side like that, where it opens up, you'll see a taper. Let me see where this one's at. Okay. So this one, the taper is going that way. So... It'll go down this way. Taper always goes up towards you. I doubt you were able to see that on the video, but trust me, there's a taper there. All right, make sure your snap ring's seated all the way in. Make sure the opening is nowhere near the cut ends of your hub and nowhere near the retainers. There we go. Now that's complete, 
That's the only one we'll need this snap press for, so we'll set that aside. Next, we'll move on to our forward clutch drum, inner seal, piston seal. You see, like I said, I've already installed the two smaller metal clad locking seals in here. But that's where they go. Do pay attention when you're putting any of those on. Do not spread them out too far. Those will break. Um, even these ones we have, they're the upgraded stronger ones. Supposed to be stronger, but they don't gouge into the other metals. I don't know how it works, but whatever. Start with our inner seal. Again, these are all square cut seals. So, making sure not to roll it when we put it in. Listen for your check ball, make sure that's moving. Start your seal, bring it around, and in. Take your thumb, go all the way around with it, feeling that it's not been rolled anywhere. So, now that's in. Take a little bit of your assembly goo, lube her up. Assembly lube is your friend. Do not be afraid of it. There is a, well, it's almost impossible to use too much. You can definitely use not enough, but I have yet to see someone use too much assembly lube. should have enough for this build but you can see we're getting a little low even though we went around the piston outside and inside with it I still like to do the drum portion as well just for added measure. Now, since this is, a, this is a square cut seal, you do not need a lip seal tool or feeler gauge or however you like to do it. Literally just goes in, give her a nice firm push, and now you're in. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, and go ahead and get the rest of this. You're gonna have a wafer plate. It's gonna be dished. The dish goes down, not up. You're also gonna have a large round C-clip. And then one of the three same size larger metal snap rings. <clears throat> so your C-clip goes in, so we have our check ball here. I always put the opening opposite of the check ball on the C-clip. That way, that opening needs to go into one of these cutouts. F, let's get this out so I can show you. So, if you have this opening over a ledge, it'll break this plate. I've seen it happen so many times. So you wanna make sure that that ring is in a cutout opening like that. Now we've covered that, let's go ahead, toss that in. There we go. Now there really is no graceful way to put this snap ring in. I think they do make a tool that presses this wafer plate down to get this snap ring in. Um, most everyone that I've seen always just hits it in. And that's what we're going to be doing as well. Sometimes they go quick. Sometimes it takes a little bit of persuasion. The biggest thing is to make sure that the opening of that ring stays in one of the windows. Easiest way, screwdriver, hammer, put the drum against you.
told you it's definitely not graceful. All right, now that it's in, make sure that everything is seated all the way around. And we do have it to where it is kind of coming out. So we'll give it another few taps just to make sure we are all the way in. You're really not, it's not like driving in bushings. You're not hammering on that thing. It's more just the vibration that does it. So let's see here. That's what it's going to look like after it's all said and done. You can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the opening of our metal ring is dead center or pretty much dead center of the opening of the wafer um, or cushion plate or return plate, whatever you want to call it. The dish is down, not up. So now that that one's done, let me set that aside. A little wipe off. All right. Now we're going to go and you know, we'll just uh, build the drums. Why not? Since we're on it. Get our forward drum back out. It's going to take two of plates. This one is your bottom apply pressure plate. This one, nice and thick, is your top apply pressure plate. So. Let's get some steels. Let's get our clutches. They've been soaking. I should be wearing gloves, but I'm not. Sorry. Not sorry. All right, so starting us off is going to be that bottom apply pressure plate. There we go. Now we'll alternate. We'll go clutch, steel. Now these particular steels, I believe, have notches. Yes, they do. So we'll put the notch, pick a spot. There we go. Put the notches there. Steel. Notch. Clutch. Notch. And then you'll see that these, we were a little bit loose on our clearance for this. So what I did is I took two forward clutch um, clutches, shaved the material off one side of each, and still has material on the other sides and put that together since they both lock on the same hub these move they do not move independent of each other they move at the same time so you have clutch material on both sides essentially what you do is you just basically add the thickness of the metal part of one clutch to your clearance and that's what tightened it up for us to where right where we need to be so that will go in Which side do we want? That side. There we go. Let's grab our snap rings. There we go. Clearance is perfect. I believe the uh, specified clearance is like, I'm going to say, 44 thousandths, somewhere in there. Um, all I know is the stock clearances for most transmissions are way too loose for my liking. So I tighten it up by quite a bit. Not as much as I tighten up on the 4L60s or 4L80s, but I definitely tighten it up. Um, and when you're setting up for your clearances, always put the clutches in and everything dry. Never pre-soak them. Do all your clearances dry, 
After you get your clearances set, that's when you soak your clutches and rebuild your drums. Um, point being, your transmission fluid is going to be cold or room temperature, whatever it is. You soak those clutches, build it. Now it's going to create imaginary drag. And that is going to throw your clearance off by a lot. So make sure that you set your clearances up dry. Then soak them, build it. It will seem a bit tighter than when you did your clearances dry, but that's just because of that imaginary drag that you're feeling. Once it's actually all together and the transmission's spinning under power of the motor, all of that goes away. <clears throat> now that that's built, we'll set that aside. We'll come over here to our third and reverse drum. Now, depending on what style C6 or what year C6 you have, this drum will hold three clutches, four or four clutches. I tried to find in my stock a third and reverse drum where the snap ring groove was moved up a little bit higher. I don't have any. They're really hard to find now. So this drum itself only holds three clutches. But there is something you can do. You can take... It normally takes this thick top apply plate just like your forward clutch drum. But if you take the bottom pressure plate that goes in the forward clutch drum and you use that as your top apply plate here for third and reverse, you can add one more clutch and steel to this drum, making it a four clutch instead of a three clutch. If you find it with the snap ring groove moved up higher, you can make it a five or even a six clutch drum. Be careful when you do that, because if you have the higher, the highest groove cut drum and you use this beveled plate it will seem like it'll work everything will be fine once you put it all together but I've seen these transmissions lock down when someone puts it in reverse because this will actually grind up against that hub so that being said let's grab us some more steels and some clutches The clutches we are using for this build are the Raybestos Stage 1. We had just the high energy Raybestos with the carbon alumatics for the forward clutch drum. Um, the owner happened to find this set of Raybestos Stage 1 Reds off of someone who was going to build a transmission but never did, so he bought those off of them really cheap. So he said, hey, can we throw them in this? I said, yeah, sure, why not? Definitely not going to hurt anything. It can only make it better. So you start off with a steel, then a clutch, then a steel, then a clutch. Coming over here to a steel, then a clutch. Where's that notch? There it is. Steel, clutch. Since that forward drum has a bottom apply plate, you don't start with a steel, you start with a clutch. Unless that clutch drum had um, a wave plate in it and things like that, then it would be a wave plate steel, then clutches. But neither of these drums came with um, the wave plate or cushion plate for engagement. So that's exactly how we are putting it back together. So... That is our small reverse snap ring. Now that everything's together, really, you give me snap ring trouble today. Here we go. All looks good, feels good, perfect. All right. There's your third and reverse drum assembled, ready to go. We did have to buy a new drum. For the previous C6, which I was not able to video. Just too busy, still by myself, so. Luckily, these, this C6, the drum was good. 
this third and reverse drum is where your band rides. Um, a lot of these units that are low miles but very old and stock that finally burn up, they have a very, very small, narrow band. And it will run a groove in this drum. And if it does, you can't really use that drum anymore. So, um, every one we do, it gets either the wide band or the extra wide, either high energy or Kevlar band. So this one's getting the extra wide red band. Now that we got that done, we'll get that out of the way. We'll go ahead and build up our ring hubs for our planetary assembly. This one is your output ring gear and drive hub. Goes in just like so. Take your snap ring, get her in, and you're good to go. Normally this is where you would get one of your three tab washers, called three tab, because it has three tabs, and that would go in these three notches right there. Um, again, all these metal washers are selectable, which means they're different sizes. So you can use these in different areas with different sizes to check or dial in your end play and things like that. But since we did the rear race upgrade, we're not going to need this because we have this bearing that's going to be right there. So now we've just rollerized the rear of the case. Now that this one's done, this one with the drive hub up close. That is for our rear planetary. That's where that one will go. We'll put that together once we drop everything in. This gets a metal tab washer here and a metal tab washer here. So, for right now, we can just stick them together. Put it out of the way. This is our forward ring gear and um, hub assembly. You'll notice this one's a lot deeper. So this goes into the forward drum. That's what catches the clutches. So, on your ring gear, you'll have your ring grooves and then a deep pocket here. Obviously, the deep pocket is where your drive hub goes. Make sure it's in. Yep, we're in. Take your smaller snap ring. There we go. On this one, I like to come by with a screwdriver, give her a turn, just to make sure that we are set all the way around. This one does like to hang up and drag a little bit, so that's why it's a good idea to always make sure it's set and expanded all the way out. So this one, like I said, is for our forward assembly. That'll go in just like that. So we'll have a metal tab washer here that rides inside of there. There is also a capture bearing right down in here. Make sure that that bearing is in good condition. If this bearing is no good, you have to replace your pinion assembly because you cannot get that capture bearing out, which is why it's called a capture bearing. You'll be able to get this first um, metal piece out, but you won't be able to get the bearing itself out. So we can go ahead and set that aside now. Let's get this pressure plate. This one is, should be for our low and reverse actually. And it is, okay. Let's grab another rag. Quick wipe down. Always make sure if you're Teardown table is the same as your build table. Make sure that it is extremely clean and wiped down. Um, that should go without saying, but you definitely do not want to be a dirty training builder. So, this is where your original sprag would go. And it consists of a brass tab, wa a brass tab washer, um, a steel cage with prongs and springs attached and then individual rollers that you have to put in a snap ring here and a snap ring here 
since we updated this to the E4OD low drag roller, no snap rings required. So you take those out and throw away the original low roller clutch. Now, you'll notice that there are wider tabs on one side than there is the other. So that goes towards the back of this hub. It only goes in one way, which is kind of nice. Just like that. And then you can actually turn it, and now it's locked in. It will not come out. It needs to come out, turn it, and pull up, and it will come out. So, we're all good. Um, at first I was a little weary about running that, just with no snap ring or anything, but after seeing that how it locks in, and I've done it on a few transmissions, it actually works really well. Now, let's go ahead and take a break. I'm going to drink some coffee, possibly open that Red Bull, and then we'll get back to it. We'll do the um, selector uh, seal, gear selector shaft seal, and then start building this transmission and keep on rocking. <laughs> 